Hi, my name is Camila and in this video I will share my tips on using references in your artwork and I will also show you some useful websites that you can use to get the perfect reference for your illustrations. This video is divided into chapters so you can skip to the part that is most interesting for you. References are photos or images that are used as visual guide to create your artworks they help you with accuracy in your drawing or painting. You can see how the subject that you want to draw looks like in real life and you can copy and or adjust it to your liking. A reference can be anything visual, it can be a photo, an image, still life, etc. Nowadays it is also popular to use 3D models as references as well. It all comes down to how the object actually looks like in real life, not just in our heads, so we can avoid the medieval cat effect. They are perfect to train your hand and eye coordination and to improve your art skills in general. The more you draw from real life references, the easier it is to later on draw from your imagination or to stylize your drawings. A reference can be used to directly copy the photo as a study or you can just use it as inspiration. This is a similar approach to still life drawing or drawing a real life model. However, with the photo I find it way easier because you do not need to convert the 3D object into the 2D surface. So referencing an image in terms of shapes, proportions, perspective, maybe lighting can be compared to drawing from real life and referencing the image for inspiration might be compared to, for example, Impressionism, where they use nature as point of reference, but they focus on color, lighting and painting in the moment, rather than studying environment in detail. You can collect multiple references for different parts of your drawing. This technique is a little bit more advanced, as sometimes you do need to imagine certain things and how they would interact with each other. Now the question you may ask is, but where do I get the references? On Google there are only stock images with large watermarks that are just ugly. And yes, Google may be a good source for your references, but it is not directed to artists. There are way better websites that have large libraries of photos that can help you with your painting journey. It's best to find royalty-free photos to avoid any copyright issues, especially if you plan on selling your artwork. Photography is also of course a form of art, so it wouldn't be right just to copy someone's work if they do not allow it, or if they did not give you the permission to copy their work or to reference their work. I guess there is a fine line in between all of that, but in general it is safer to use photos that are designed to be referenced, or that have the artist's permission to do so. Personally, I think for poses it's fine, but some artists do reference the Pinterest photos quite heavily, down to the artistic qualities of that photo, so... So, as a chronically online person, I have collected a decent library of free art resources, from anatomy to color palettes. You will find all of the links in the description box, but here are some of my favorite websites. The Artist Reference website has a large collection of photos of human anatomy and different poses. This is especially useful if you draw design characters, but you can find the other references as well. Most of the references there are photos of real-life people, so it is perfect for your studies, for sketches, if you need anything um, specific for a pose or you just want to clearly see the pose and the character. They also have their own YouTube channel with art content that focuses on references, poses and studies. Pose Maniacs is another favorite of mine. This website is great for dynamic poses and anatomy. All of their references are also royalty free. Here you can find 3D models that you can rotate to find the perfect angle and you can also apply different types of lighting to that model so it is very useful if you do have more complex and more complicated 
poses to draw or environments to draw and you want to place your character specifically in that kind of scenario. For inspiration in general, for poses, for outfit inspiration or other resources like for example textures. I most often use Unsplash but I've also been browsing Pexels lately. Both of these websites have a massive collection of high quality photos from professional photographers that kindly share their work for free. And I will also link some alternative websites in the description as well. For my fan art enthusiasts, especially for the JRPG genre enjoyers, I have another website that I find very useful and it is the Games Fashion Archive. It is super helpful if you want to draw very detailed outfits from the games. On that website you can also find 3D models of the outfits. I used it a lot when I was drawing Genshin fan art because those outfits are just insane in terms of details. If you're struggling picking the color palette for your illustrations or you just want to experiment or challenge yourself, you can use a website called Cool Oz. <laughs> Coolers, cool, coolers. <laughs> that website generates random color palettes. Or there is also Color Hunt that has a gallery of ready to go palettes. If you know any other useful websites, please share them in the comments so everyone can learn. Now you may ask, okay, I do have my reference, that's great, but now how do I use it in practice? When I have the picture open, I cannot have it next to my drawing, I do not have like a second monitor, what do I do? So I would recommend the app called Pure Ref. In this app, you can collect your references for one particular artwork. This app is free to download, but you can donate to them if you do find this useful. With this app, you can put into a separate window all of your references and you can adjust the window and the photos. The window settings can be adjusted to your preferences as well. For example, the window can stay on top the whole time. Since I use Krita for my artworks, this software does have a built-in reference tool, which I use quite often. With this docker, you can import your reference image directly to your Krita file and adjust them in your painting area. Very simple, very effective. And if you want to collect your references digitally in a cloud just to have them for the future saved up, you can just create an account for each of the websites that you use most often, for example, Unsplash or Pexels do have an option to create an account. You do not have to publish anything, but you do have the option to collect the photos in separate folders. So then nothing gets lost and you can categorize everything. Of course, for collections, you can also use the websites like Pinterest or Tumblr. On Pinterest, you can create boards that are similar to collections and on Tumblr, you can tag your posts. Not all photos are going to work as references for your drawings, especially if you are just a beginner. Choosing the right photo will allow you to focus on shapes, on proportions, on anatomy. This will be the perfect practice to improve your skills. You can also try out different techniques, for example, sketching just the shapes or trying to make a copy that is closer to the original image or making a messy sketch out of the reference. But for an easy to follow references, I would highly recommend to choose a photo that would clearly show the subject, the pose, the anatomy. Avoid blurry photos, unnatural angles, difficult perspective, harsh lighting and photos where the subject is not clearly visible. Later on, when you do gain the skills and are more comfortable with drawing and your hand and eye coordination gets better, then you can challenge yourself for practice with more complex references. Of course, more complex photos are more interesting to look at, but they are also more difficult to draw and to execute. So you might get at first more frustrated when using difficult references rather than choosing a simple ones where you can just learn the shapes 
and the anatomy and more important details like this. And then gradually you can add more elements to your drawing like the lighting, the perspective and other complicated things. Here I have some of the examples of the photos that I would use as my reference and the ones that I would avoid. Starting off with this first one. This is a portrait that also shows the silhouette of a girl. First of all, you cannot see her hands. Of course, the photo is very beautiful, but if you want to recreate that, you would need to imagine how her left hand looks like and also where to put her right hand. I guess hide it completely, but you need to think more about using this reference. Also, the shadows on her eyes and also half of her face also might be a little bit difficult to draw for beginners. But the one next to it, we do see the full silhouette of the girl. We also do not have very harsh lighting on her face, so you can see her features. The only thing um, I do see more difficult in this reference is also her left hand. It's not facing the camera straight, but it is a little bit tilted. So for example, in this case, you need to remember to like shorten the arm. But still, you can see her arm, how it looks like. And you can also see her other arm and you have the full silhouette really nicely shaped. So I do think the right photo would be way easier to draw. The next one is a portrait. It is also a very similar image. But in the left one, she does have the hair on her face. Of course, it is a beautiful photo, but it would be harder to draw since you cannot see her lips, you cannot see where her nose is, and also her eye is a little bit covered. Then the way she has her hand um, next to her, you also cannot see her hand, so you can either skip that part, but then she also hides a part of her body. So the picture on the right, she does not have her hand. You can see how her chest looks like, how her you can see her shoulders and her face is clearer to see. You can pick and collect multiple references to combine them into one artwork. Those are sometimes references used for inspiration, but also to see how a specific element looks like in real life. You can use particular elements from different photos and then combine them into one illustration. For example, you can use one photo as a reference for the pose and the other photo as a reference, for example, for the outfit. And another photo, let's say, for the hairstyle, if you're drawing a character. So this technique is more complicated and it requires you to use your imagination and also your skills to properly execute the idea. But it is extremely helpful to put together the whole artwork in separate images that inspired you. When you are comfortable with drawing the right proportions and your hand and eye coordination gets better, you might start looking into different ways to stylize your drawings. I will not be going much into detail about how to achieve your signature art style in this video, but I will give you some tips very simple ones. Like I explained in previous points, you may use the references for different parts of your artwork or just for inspiration. There are no rules in art, but the anatomy and perspective are the most important. If these elements look good, there is a good chance that your entire artwork will end up looking really nice. And when you are familiar with these elements, then you can exaggerate certain elements or simplify them or apply any other techniques that make your art more original because this is the basis of stylization you either exaggerate or simplify something according to your preference all right that is everything i have for you today but you can check out my playlist where i share my painting process i also have a separate playlist for all of the krita tutorials that i've made and you can also check out my artworks down in the description box. I am on a lot of social media websites, but I don't use a lot of them to be quite honest. Uh, but you can check out my drawings if you're interested. 
Thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you in my next video. Bye bye.